Hey guys, this video is being brought to you from the Marion Blair Global Headquarters. My 2014 Ram 2500. I guarantee that this video is coronavirus free. And that's probably not funny, but I guess we can inject a little bit of humor into this mess. It is a mess, isn't it? Uh, I saw something on TV the other night. It said, well, the good news is the virus is only affecting old people. Well, it's like, what, old people don't want to live either? You know, it's just, <laughs> it's just young people. So I, I got to find it sort of humorous in a way because when you get old, you know, you still value life quite a bit. I think we all do, uh, even more so, I think, as you get older, if you know what I mean. Uh, when you're young, you're infallible. But anyway, uh, I've been looking at my bank's eye dash here and recording some some data on fuel flow and fuel flow versus active regen and versus a normal, you know, normal driving. And I had the opportunity the other day. I had a regen and I was going down a fairly straight stretch of road between. Uh, between uh, Maurice and uh, Abbeville and uh, strong headwind. So my, my general overall mileage was lower than it usually is. But it was an excellent opportunity to compare fuel flow with uh, normal versus active regen. So that's what I did. And I wanted to share that data with you because I feel like it's more accurate than some of the other uh, data that I've probably provided in some older videos and I think each one of these these uh, regions are going to be different this particular one was 17 minutes and uh, I did it 50 miles an hour you know pop on along mainly because I wanted to take advantage of the of the stretch of highway without doing a bunch of turning around and stuff so I could get some good accurate data both runs were into the wind everything was identical as far as I can tell of course, you're going to have different results on various regions depending on how your uh, your soot buildup is, your your passive heat being contributed to your active uh, heat, and that sort of thing. But anyway, enough with that. Let's look at the data and see what I got. Hey guys, no, this is not Bob Ross. A lot of people say I sound like Bob Ross. I think I look like him. All right, let's look at some charts. Well, that went half my YouTube audience. But looking at things visually is sometimes better than just throwing a bunch of numbers out there, right? So this data was recorded at one second intervals with a 17 minute regen and 50 miles an hour. So when I set my cruise control on 50, that's what I always get. Not quite a half mile per hour less for some reason. It's just a little off from what it reads on the dash. So what we have here is our regen temperatures. The green is just before the regen, normal driving in other words, and the red is during the regen. The EGT turbo is just after the turbocharger and the EGT DPF is just after the DPF filter. So as you can see, your turbo EGTs and your DPF EGTs are virtually identical as that heat works back toward the back of the exhaust pipe. Of course, during the regen is when it gets interesting. You can see that 682 on the turbo and 1070 on the DPF. That's on the outlets. There's a lot of questions asked about turbo temperatures during a regen. That's why I thought I would show, show this chart. Uh, there's kind of a misconception sometimes that the turbo is getting as hot as the DPF filter. It gets a little hotter. You can see about 150 degrees, not even that. But it's not uh, dramatically more heat. The heat really starts building at the DOC, the diesel oxidation catalyst which is downstream of uh, the uh, turbocharger. What the hell is this? Well, what I'm trying to show here is the way the diesel fuel is injected into the exhaust system to create the uh, oxidation that creates the heat that 
burns the soot. And this is controlled by the PCM, like just about everything on the truck is controlled by the PCM. This is 1,023 seconds. You probably can't see that, but it doesn't matter. 1,023 seconds is six is uh, 17 minutes. And the zero and one is just on, off, on, off. And you can see that they vary just a little bit in terms of how long it's injecting the diesel and how long it's shut off, depending on what the PCM is seeing as far as temperatures and the other stuff that's fed to it during this regen. I thought it was kind of cool. But then again, I'm kind of weird too. Remember, I'm the guy that rolls around on his Harbor Freight Creeper in the middle of the night when he can't sleep looking at the bottom of his truck. Okay, and finally, what we came here for, which was to look at the actual mileage numbers, which is roughly 23 under normal driving. And I found that to be a little low, actually, at 50 miles an hour. Normally, I'm doing way better than that. But I attribute that to the strong headwind, and I'm talking probably 20 mile an hour headwind. And when I say way better than that, I mean when I'm just normally driving around at 50 miles an hour on a straight stretch of flat level road like this. But that that's still okay. I mean, it is what it is. The uh, normal mileage was taken before the regen naturally and for about the same period of time, same road, everything, same conditions. And then the uh, regen mileage was the 17 minutes that uh, the truck was actually in regen. And those are averages, one second intervals. So that's going to do it, guys. Hope you got something out of it. And yeah, click like and subscribe and all that nonsense. Bob Ross needs all the help he can get after the stock market went down the last few weeks. My savings looks pretty pathetic. Don't even know if I can afford to drive to Harbor Freight anymore. But seriously, guys, I hope you all are healthy. And until next time, adios. God bless all y'all.